Well, good afternoon. Hey, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 33rd DEM I Wonder webinar. Uh, the DEM has so many services, offerings, programs, and hidden gems that we want to share with all of you. So we're excited to take just a few minutes this week to highlight these features in our webinar. The Utah Division of Emergency Management is hosting this weekly webinar series aimed at providing local emergency managers with rel relevant content and opportunities to enhance their capabilities. Webinars are live for Q&A and recorded for later viewing on the DEM website and YouTube channel. Most of those webinars, most of these webinars are, or, are seminars or workshops with a hands-on portion which will allow emergency managers to become oriented to a DEM process or test a DEM product. So our schedule today will be as follows. We will start with our ground rules and etiquette. Next, we'll have a brief presentation by Braden Norris on how to identify critical infrastructure in my jurisdiction. Following the presentation, there'll be a hands-on portion where participants may be encouraged to test out the product or process that was presented. Following the hands-on portion, the presenter will be available for Q&A, for a Q&A session. Following the Q&A, we'll close with a short message about upcoming webinars. So the ground rules today are fairly simple. Please mute your line while the presenter is presenting. If you have a question, you may type it in the group chat or unmute at the appropriate time to ask your question. The session is being recorded and will be available on our website for future viewing. So thank you all for your attendance today. And with that, I'm going to turn the time over to Braden. Thanks so much, Jeff. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, as the title suggested, we're going to talk about how we can identify critical infrastructure within our own jurisdictions, whether that's on a city level, on a county level, or on a state level. Um, we need to be identifying infrastructure throughout the state of Utah just so that we can become more resilient. And if, if you see me looking around, I have multiple monitors going and I have my notes just so I don't miss anything because there's a lot of important information I want to be sharing with you today. Um, and so just to get started, I just want to summarize uh, about a paragraph from the National Preparedness Goal uh, about why we need to be identifying infrastructure. Uh, and, and it says a community's resilience is gauged by the ability to prepare, anticipate for threats, adapted to challenging conditions, and withstanding and recovering rapidly from disruptions. Whole community resilience comes by way of prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery efforts. And these are the five missions of the National Preparedness School. Um, identifying and prioritizing which infrastructure is of most consequence to a community will naturally lead to making beneficial strategic decisions that support those five missions to assure the health and validity of the social and economic fabric of our communities. So hopefully us all within the emergency management realm in the state of Utah, we're aiming for those five things. And today I'll be talking about a tool that you can put into your emergency management tool belt to help um, you with this. And so you may uh, have heard of this tool I'll be talking about, uh, or you may not have. I, I know it's gone through uh, different individuals um, heading off the efforts of this tool, you may have used it yourself, but now I'm going to talk about the most current up-to-date version of this tool, how you can get access to it, um, and how this information can be used in disaster planning. And so just to, to start off as an introduction, um, some time back, I'm not quite sure how long ago, but the Department of Public Safety was asked uh, tasked with creating a critical infrastructure protection program that has statewide uh, applicability. The program includes providing local jurisdictions with a consequence-based infrastructure prioritization tool. The tool was created to give a simple, standardized, and repeatable process to identify and prioritize the critical infrastructure throughout the state. And so this um, tool was used so that everyone within the state is on the same page um, on how to identify their critical infrastructure, because you could have someone down in Washington County and someone in Utah County that may have different criteria of what they're looking for. So this program I'm gonna talk about is gonna make it so it's all 
um, standardized throughout the state um, when we're doing this. Um, so it, it gives emergency managers and, and other public safety entities an initial summary of the prioritized critical infrastructure in their area of responsibility. And we saw this a lot during COVID um, about how originally there was a, a list of people that were deemed critical and that can only do so much in their business operations and how other people came and said, hey, well, I'm critical for this reason um, and this tool will give some assistance in uh, disaster recovery and and who who gets what first because unfortunately we're going to have to make those hard decisions so the standardized process will help us in that um, decision making and it's flexible depending on the situation but it it will help and so identifying these important and often interdependent infrastructure locations provides important awareness to assist all public safety stakeholders and the representatives towards building resilient uh, to possible infrastructure disruptions. And so when we're talking about critical infrastructure, uh, the way I see it on the state level is that infrastructure is broken down into 16 different sectors of infrastructure. Um, and this definition is coming from the Department of Homeland Security. Um, and they came out with this definition back in 2008. And so um, there are sectors, and then within these 16 sectors of infrastructure, there are subsectors that kind of break it down into more detail. But I was going to tell you what these sectors of infrastructure are. We have transportation, agriculture and food, defense industrial bases, energy, public health and health care, banking and finance, water and wastewater, chemical, commercial facilities, critical manufacturing, dams, emergency services, nuclear reactors, and materials that are similar, and waste, to telecommunications, information technology, and then government facilities. And so, um, like I mentioned, this tool, we call it the Utah Critical Infrastructure Prioritization Tool. And in the past, um, I'll pull up my screen and show you what that tool looked like. So as you can see, as this is pulling up, this is the, the previous um, USIP tool. It was a Microsoft Excel-based program that allowed the users to assign infrastructure-specific scores based on standardized questions. So within this tool, every time you would pull it up, these standardized questions would come up. You would answer the questions based off your best knowledge uh, or whoever is answering um, the survey. And based on what questions were asked, it would give you a criticality score for whatever location that you were looking at from zero to 100 of how important that location was to the city, the county, and the state. Um, and so after that, it will provide a, a summary report of the infrastructure within the, your specific jurisdiction. And like I mentioned, the rank or the score it was given. Um, so the current tool that we ha um, have kind of revamped to make it more user friendly and, and get it out of this Excel based format um, does everything that this tool does and a little bit more. And so to give you a little background knowledge for those who haven't used this or haven't scored any infrastructure with this tool in the past, uh, it was only uh, eligible to be used in Microsoft Excel on a Windows computer that was running Windows 7 um, or previous. And so it kind of limited the option of who could actually use this program. And so either myself or a past DEM employee would then have to come to your jurisdiction, sit down with you with their own computer and ask questions for as long as, as it took to get all that infrastructure scored that we wanted to do at this time. Uh, we then were able to upgrade uh, the back end of it so it would work with Windows 10 and new exist existing computers, but then walking through with some other individuals trying to get them to use this program. It, it was a headache for myself and it was a headache for them. And so I, I sat there and thought about what could we do to make this, um, to make this better. So 
Um, some of you might be familiar with ArcGIS online, uh, but for those of you who have never used it or don't know what it is, don't worry. I've thought of you as well because I understand that not every city or jurisdiction may have the funds to be able to purchase this product, uh, but you can still use it in the end, and I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, so ArcGIS is a cloud-based mapping and analysis um, program. Um, it, it's used to make maps, uh, look at data, share and collaborate with other people, and get access to workflow-specific apps, maps, and data from around the globe uh, that could be used for a whole bunch of different situations. Some of you may um, be familiar with ArcGIS and not even know it, so let me pull over. So during COVID-19, uh, the state actually used ArcGIS for the um, COVID-19 dashboard. And so this dashboard right here was used in ArcGIS, and this is something similar that you're going to see in the new USIP tool. Uh, we also use it for other things as well, like current incidents throughout the, the state of Utah and the Find My uh, Emergency Manager with uh, on the dem.utah.gov website. So those are some examples of what ArcGIS can be used for. You may have seen them, uh, just without knowing that's what it was used for. Um, so the current USIP tool, I've kind of teased it a little bit. Um, it will allow the user, whoever is going to be using it within your jurisdiction to assign infrastructure specific scores based on standardized questions which provide a summary report of the infrastructure within your specific jurisdiction uh, the cool sorry the tool can increase a jurisdiction's situational awareness of their infrastructure landscape and aid in improving the local threat picture um, USIP also provides a jurisdiction the flexibility to adjust their security posture according to the identified or anticipated threats um, to your area or the infrastructure that you're um, identifying. And it also provides the emergency manager information needed to establish, establish a prioritized facility inspection plan um, if any buildings are disrupt. It can also be used by first responders. So if we do have um, a localized or a statewide emergency, you can pull up the program and say and see, hey, here are our top um, scored facilities in our jurisdiction um, and based off situation and what everyone decides you can then respond to these higher priority locations first. So when using the USIP tool and going through and answering its questions uh, it will rely on whoever's using the program's knowledge. So if you're a local emergency manager or a fire chief or a police chief and you're sitting down and you're going to be answering these questions, it's based off what you know as a local about that location. And so none of these questions on the USIP tool um, are, too, are too hard that you'd have to look up the information. Uh, but I would recommend that when you're going through and scoring this information that you assemble at least a team of two or three people and go through your uh, city's infrastructure or your ju jurisdiction's infrastructure so you get multiple people's input on um, answering these questions. And so before you even think about using the tool, uh, it's important that you have already identified what you want to be scoring. Um, so whether you're going to be looking at electric um, production facilities or water and wastewater or transportation you want to you want to pick something that you want to uh, a sector of infrastructure you want to identify and score um, and if if you don't know where to start uh, I have a few links that I would be willing to send you that would help you look at your area and pick out infrastructure or if that doesn't work out for you the state of Utah um, has a contract with a business licensing database that looks at all of the business licensings throughout the state of Utah uh, and the nation. And if a, um, a building has identified themselves 
in their business license as they do X, Y, or Z, it will come up in that database. <clears throat> and so if you want to see all of the hospitals within your area, you can just shoot me an email and say, hey, Brayden, can you pull me a list of hospitals? Um, and if that location has put their business license as a hospital, I can pull that list and send it over to you. And so now uh, I want to show you the new tool. And so this isn't the final product. There are a few things that are still being tweaked on it, but here is the dashboard that you would see when using the new uh, USIP tool. It's a lot better looking than the old Excel uh, spreadsheet and all the information that you would put into this program goes into ArcGIS so that anyone that has um, access to ArcGIS in your jurisdiction, um, if, the, if they have clearance, would be able to see what you put in. And so how the new tool has been um, thought about is I wanted, I wanted it so we'll just take, we'll just talk about Salt Lake County, for instance. Um, if you are the city of Riverton, you are only able to see city of Riverton infrastructure. If you're the city of South Jordan, you can only see the city of South Jordan infrastructure. But if you are the Salt Lake County emergency manager or whoever's going to be using this product, you can see everything within your county. So you'll be able to see all cities and all the infrastructure that's been scored within your county. And then uh, myself and a few others um, at, at the state will have a statewide view of all the infrastructure that has been scored within the state of Utah. And so currently we have some test data in here. This isn't real data, don't worry about that. But you can see that I can see everything that we have tested in Salt Lake County and then two items, two or three items down in Washington County. So as a state individual, I have a bird's eye view of what everyone is doing. The county level has a, has a bird's eye view of what the county's doing. And on a city level, that jurisdiction can see um, what they have. And this will then all be based upon um, verifying who you are, who are you with, should you have access to it, and if so, we will give you those um, rights and privileges to see whatever you need to be seeing as an emergency manager. Hey, Braden. Yes, Jeff. Hey, Jason Bradley asked, has all the information that's been put in before carry over? That is a great question. I will get I will get to that. Um, so like I mentioned, some of you have used this. You have used the old Excel worksheet. You've probably got uh, a handful of, of documents sitting on your computer with the different infrastructure sectors that you have scored. So I have access to all of those and everything that currently has been scored scored in the past, I can then do a bulk upload of that into the new program. So if you have scored down in Washington County, I will upload all of that and you don't have to do it a second time. It's already done. So that was a great question that has been brought up. And so I just want to, uh, if you can see right here in, in the middle where it says assets, you can see that 10 or 11 of these assets are red. And one of the assets is this dark gray color. All the assets in red are going to be assets that um, after a certain amount of time, I'm, I'm thinking annually, so once a year, if you have not viewed the information that you have scored um, or made any edits to that, um, that asset will turn red just giving you um, a visualization of, oh, oh, hey, I need to go in and look at our infrastructure again and just verify that it's up to date. Because I've noticed that once we um, start doing things, we'll, we'll probably forget and we'll say, crap, it's been five years. I need to sit down and do this all at once, rather than if you just look at it once a year from when you, you've done it, it will be updated. So if, if you leave um, or there's a, a disaster, will have the most up-to-date information. And so let, let's, just talk, let's just go through the process. So let's say you've received a list from myself or your own research about infrastructure that you wanna score. Um, you're gonna come down here where it says, add new infrastructure here. Um, and it will take us to a new page where there has been a survey created that has all of the questions from the old USIP tool um, in a nice, neat manner that you can go through and click 
click buttons. So it's very user friendly. It's not difficult where you have to try to upload the, the old Excel sheet into the program and try to fight the program because we had lots of headaches and issues that way. You just say, hey, here's my list um, and let's just get going. So as we um, are going through and scoring infrastructure, it's important that you fill out all the information um, correctly. So right here, we want to know who Ray, is. Can you, can you make your screen a little bit larger, just so that you uh, see? It? Yes, I will try my best. Okay. How's that yeah. for everyone? Okay. That's Sorry. Better. Thanks, dude. No, you're welcome. So yes, I'll be filling out my information. So I'm Braden Norris. You want to know my my title? So I'll just write for. I'll put, I'm a planner uh, for DEM, and then a good contact email or phone number for whoever is scoring this asset because myself at the state, somebody else, someone in the county may have questions to know, hey, Braden, why did you score this asset this way? And you can say, oh, it's because, oh, I'm, I'm good buddies with this um, infrastructure owner and operator. We just did an exercise and they told me this information just so we can clarify if they have any information. So I'll, I'll put in my phone number and I'll click next. So now we wanna know the name of the asset. So if you're scoring a hospital, a wastewater site, uh, a gas station, just, just put the name. So for now, we'll just put, we'll just put this as a test. Um, and you may be wondering, Braden, how much infrastructure in my area do I need to score? And that it, that's up to you because not everything um, in your jurisdiction needs to be mapped. Um, if you're looking at Salt Lake City, there's a lot more infrastructure there than if you're going to go out to to Willa or another place like that. So I would just say maybe look at your top oh, 10 to 30 sites in each sector of infrastructure and start with that. We don't want to just go gung-ho all at once, just slowly do it over time um, so that we can have things on the map so um, we can plan. And so then we'll talk about the city. I'll just say I'm with Riverton. My county, I'll go down and find Salt Lake. Um, and another thing that we found out with using the old USIP tool is not everything has an address. And so we'd have to go online, get on Google Maps, find the latitude and longitude of the um, infrastructure because it could be an important water tower up on the hill and it's on a dirt road. And so there's not really an address. So right here we have a map. Um, that we can zoom in and say, hey, I don't know the exact address, uh, but let me, we know it's in this general area. So I'll come down and say, here's Riverton. We believe the point is, is, is right here. And so you click on it, it'll put that point and you can see down here on the bottom, it will show the latitude and longitude rather than putting in the address. And so once we get the asset's name, the location of it, we want to identify which sector of infrastructure uh, we are scoring. So as I mentioned, there's 16 sectors of infrastructure. You can go down, pick the one you want. We'll just say this is a building for agriculture and food. And I mentioned that there are subsectors within each sector of infrastructure to kind of break it down a little bit more. So is this a building that supplies food? Is it a processing plant? Does this transport food? Um, is it a food distribution site? You go in, just pick the one you want. We'll just say this is a storage location, and then we'll click next. And then this is when we get into the bread and butter of the USIP tool. These are the questions that you would go through that, that are repeatable for each sector of infrastructure. So no matter what you choose, the same questions will come up every time, and not every question will be answered every time. So the first question uh, is asked is, is this site systemically important? And as you can see underneath it, um, each question will have a definition of what we're looking for exactly. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this isn't the final product. I know we're working on a, a, an updated survey. And so this may look different when you get in and use the program, but this is the general idea. And if this information is 
not in the tool. I am currently updating the USIP user manual. I can send that to you. It will have all this information um, on hand for yourself. So you can look and see, but if you ever have any questions, you can more uh, than welcome, feel free to reach out to myself. So we can go through and there's a list of questions. Uh, it's kind of like a yes or no question. So is this location or site systemically important? No or yes, and if yes, is it just for the city? Does it affect the county, the state, the nation, or internationally? And each one of these questions has a, um, a number assigned to it, anywhere from zero to 11. So if you were to click no on this question, you would point, you would put, it would put zero points towards your total score and all the way up to internationally, it give it 11. So we'll just say that this site is um, only applicable to the city. Then we wanna know what is the um, site occupancy of this location. So like if you go into uh, like a restaurant or another building, there, there's a sign that will say this, this room can only hold 40 people. That's what we're looking for. What's the maximum amount of people that would be at this location? That if there was an incident, responders could look at this and say, hey, we know from our use of scoring that this stadium venue can hold 5,000 people. So they can just look at that and say, all right, and then plan accordingly. So if this is a food storage site, there's probably anywhere from 10 to 100 uh, individuals working at this location. Then the next question is, um, is this site sy symbolically important? So this could be um, a religious site, a tribal site, um, a, a cultural site, a historical site, like it could be up in Salt Lake, like this is the place, a uh, monument, that would be a historical site to the state of Utah. If it's a church um, or anything similar, it'd be religious. And we know we have, um, tribal land within the state of Utah, you'd click that and you get a score. But because this is just a food storage location, it would not be symbolic. Then we want to know uh, if this location is um, important to the economic revenue of the area, whether city, county, state, again, we go in and say, yes, this is probably important for the entire state of Utah. It probably houses groceries that are delivered to a large grocery store chain. Then we want to know if this location it provides a critical service, if it has anything to do with life safety. And I know this question doesn't portray what I'm saying, that's in the update. So does this uh, building, is it a hospital? Does it uh, house first responders, um, electricity, communication, transportation equipment, things like that? Um, we'll say, no, it's not critical in life safety um, incidents, but it's probably critical for getting food out. So that's what that question is asking, and that will be updated in, in the, the new survey. Then we would like to know if this location has any hazardous or weaponized materials on site. It could be that the site stores um, chlorine or manure, that if this site was targeted or there was a, a disaster, it would cause a, a greater impact. So if this caught fire and it had a, a, a flammable, flammable chemical in it, would it explode and do more damage? That's what we're looking for. Could this site going down cause larger problems? Um, and if so, it's yes or no. And then we would like to know how this material is then transported to the location, whether it's by truck, by rail, or by ship. You're probably not going to get by ship a lot, but we would just like to know uh, those details. And so we can say um, probably no hazard materials on site. And if they do, if they have a, like a small amount, I would probably put no. But if there's a large quantity, like I said, that would cause for the further disasters, put yes, because they may have cleaning chemicals and things on hand to clean the food storage uh, facility. And so next, we want to know uh, the public accessibility of this asset. And so this is asking, um, can just 
myself off the street walk into the facility and get to places I shouldn't? Is it like a Walmart where everyone can go in and out freely um, and get into the back room without being stopped? Or do people need uh, identification and credentialing to go throughout the building? We would just like to know that. And so we'll just say it's probably some credentialing. You probably need a badge or a key card to get into the, to get into the facility. Next, we'd like to know what's the surrounding population um, of this asset? Is it in a rural area? Is it maybe a suburb? Or is it like downtown Salt Lake where there's a high density, density amount of people? It's, we'll just say it's high density, high or medium. And then next is what is the number of uh, potential natural disasters in this area? Um, are we just looking at, we, we all know in Utah, we plan for a big earthquake. Would it just be an earthquake? Could it be potential flooding? Is it next to uh, a mountain? Could there be landslides or avalanches or fires and things like that? And next, you have the option to adjust the score anywhere from four to 10 points, because what if this food distribution facility is the only one in the surrounding counties and it serves all of them? It's probably more important than if there's a whole bunch of the food um, distribution facilities or storage facilities. So we'll just say it's about medium amount of importance. And so at this point, we have answered all of our questions. Um, the program on the back end is going to calculate your total score. But then we have the option to add any final notes. And as individuals are using this and you say, hey, Braden, I think maybe that this question should be worded here this way, or maybe we should take this out and maybe add this, because I know um, a lot of individuals that I have shown this to, this tool to or are familiar with it are curious to know about if locations have generators or fuels or hookups for generators. And that's something that I'm considering that we may potentially um, do an update to the questionnaire and change that on, uh, on the back end. But I would like the user's feedback on how they like to tool and what they would see. But if there's any additional notes that you would like to add that may not be in those questions, feel free to add those and or why you scored um, the asset a certain way. So we'll just put in test and we'll submit it. So at this point, it has been submitted. Um, I believe in the update that once you have submitted the survey, it will take you back automatically to the tool itself. But as we close out of that and we can zoom in and we can see that our new site um, has been put into the program. And so you can see here, if we click on it, this is just our, our test. Here are all the questions that we answered about the asset. And you can see down here, total score. After we answered the questions, we got a total score of 33 uh, out of 100 of how important this site is. And it may be different. This may be on the higher end of the food and agriculture spectrum but it may not be as high as a power generation plant that serves majority of the state. Um, and a little fun feature that we put in is as I zoom out in this load, you can, you can see that the, the little circle icons for each one of the scored assets, uh, the sizing is a little bit, it's off. Some are bigger, some are smaller, and that's due to uh, the bigger circles have a higher score than the smaller circles that so you can see right here, this very important secret facility that we did. And uh, you click on it, you can see it got a score of 88. That's a lot higher than 33. So that's why the, the icon is larger. And so that's just a brief rundown of how um, to use the product. Like I said, I'll be uh, updating the user's manual um, I'll send that out to everyone that has requested access or we give access um, to. Um, and then let me just look at my notes real fast. And so the information that is going to be entered uh, into the USIP tool, it's not going to be um, just kept within your organization. We may share this information with um, individuals that are on a need to know basis. Uh, we would like to share it with the statewide information analysis center. So as they are looking at 
oh, potential threats that are happening throughout the state, or if they're doing um, planning for a sporting event or a concert or a venue event, that they'll have access to surrounding infrastructure to that location so that they could potentially um, they could put someone at that location so it doesn't cause any further problems. Uh, we'll use it at the EOC and specifically um, our emergency support function 14 is going to be changing into the business emergency coordination center. So we'll be using that at the EOC for uh, planning of exercises. And then if there is an incident, we'll have access to everyone's scored infrastructure. So we don't have to call you up and say, hey, um, Lehigh Emergency Manager, what what's your, your top sites? We'll, we'll already have access to it. And in the past, um, I know Salt Lake County has used information from the USIP tool when they are applying for some kind of grant. And so they reached out to me and said, hey, Braden, can you, can you send us the, the names of the locations that we scored? And that was used um, in some of the grants that they were able to get. I and mean, so all the information that is contained within the USIP tool, it is on a needs to know basis. It's for official use only, F-O-U-O. Um, and like I mentioned, this tool can be used uh, to help with your, your mitigation plan, um, getting any aid through Thyra or any additional federal grant money. And as well, um, we I've been working with Rocky Mountain Power um, over the past month, we've been updating our emergency energy plan, and we just had an exercise yesterday, and they themselves have identified critical uh, locations throughout the state, but they would like access to some of this data so that if there is a response, they can say, hey, we can see that the state has identified uh, this group of infrastructure as top critical sites. Let's see if we can get electricity back to those sites earlier because they play a critical role. And I, I would assume that we would share it with other large owners and operators of utilities um, on a needs to know basis. And so that's some um, important information about why we need to be doing this. Um, and you might be saying, hey, Brayden, I've already done this. I'd hate to do it again. I'd love to work with you and put in that information. Um, like I said, you can create a team to help do this as well. But we just want to make sure that the critical sites throughout the state um, are mapped so they can help in our, our disaster recovery. And so that's the, the that's my presentation. At this point, I'd love to open it up for any questions. Um, and I'll just stop presenting. Um, and I'll just turn it over to you, Jeff, or anyone else that may have yeah. questions. Yeah, so James, <clears throat> excuse me, James Ray asked, can you explain one more time where we need to go to access the tool? The use that, the that is a great question. Um, so well, like I mentioned, it is all gonna be housed on ArcGIS, ArcGIS online. Um, some jurisdictions have access to it, some jurisdictions don't. And so what we can do is if your jurisdiction does have access to ArcGIS, uh, we can give you clearance to to view the USIP tool, and I still need to work with our ArcGIS team on getting um, that clearance to the correct individuals. And that's why uh, this new version of USIP has taken so long, as we've had some hurdles trying to uh, work through how do we give Riverton City the access to only see Riverton, but me as a state employee seeing everything and then the county just seeing the county so that's some of the hiccups so once uh so if you're interested reach out to me and say hey Braden, i'd love to get access to the uses usip tool um and then i'll reach back to our arcgis team on how we can get you that credentialing to get in and if you don't have access to arcgis don't worry you will be able to piggyback um off the state's um arcgis account I'm not, I'm not on the technical side of this, so I don't know how it works, but we can basically give you, I, I don't want to call it a temporary account, but you can piggyback uh, off us and we can give you a user login um, and you can create a password and you'll be able to use this. And so James, to answer your question, reach out to myself, just let me know, hey, you're interested, and then we'll give you that credentialing and you can go in and start uh, identifying infrastructure without your within your jurisdiction and if you need help please reach out to me and i can give you access to many of the tools that we've used in the past to do so 
Perfect. Hey, one more question. That big red icon with the M in it. Tony Stark's new place. What? Was there an icon with an no, M on it? Oh, I'm just kidding, Brady. Oh, Come okay. on. Goodness gracious. I'm sorry. No. Hey, is there any other questions? Perfect. Hey, that's an that's an amazing tool for real. So appreciate um you getting on and, and showing that for us. Again, we we can put links in on the YouTube video that, you know, and directions on how to get a hold of you and, and follow up with you in order to gain access to that, to the USEP as well. So okay, that'd be uh, wonderful. Anything else you have? No, that's it. And like I said, if, if you would like to start doing this, please feel free to reach out to myself and we'll, we'll work on getting you that information and start getting in and using the tool. Uh, if you don't reach out to me, eventually I'll just be adding information that I have collected on my end from um, the private sector, and then I'll reach out to you and just say, hey, I've noticed nothing's been uh, done on your end. Is there something I can help you with? So you might be hearing from me eventually, uh, but I'd be, I'd be happy to work with you if you, need, if you need so or if you have any questions. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> well, thanks, Braden, for your presentation today. Um, for everybody else, as a reminder, this webinar and all the other webinars in this series will be available on the DEM website at dem.utah.gov slash exercises. And now it is dem.utah.gov slash I wonder. Our next webinar will be in December, December 2nd. It'll be presented by Josh and will be on the EOC situational awareness tools. So if you have any other topics that you'd like to be discussed, send your suggestions to me at jefffrankum at utah.gov and we can add your topic to the calendar. Um, as always, we're excited to help you explore and get to know all that DEM can offer emergency management community. Uh, we wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and a good weekend off next week and we'll see you guys in december until next time keep wondering thanks again braden